all of a sudden you step into what we call what the managerial role. So mm -hmm. all of a sudden, um, I know, again, just using with an example, there's many we could pull from, but in our business, you got this particular owner who's doing, ha wearing all these hats, who's maybe delivering parts as an example, or, you know, and take this example and relate to whatever business you're in, um, maybe working the counter, making, maybe going, collecting money, doing all these typical things. And then they reach a point where they're working too many hours, their lifestyle starts to fade and they start asking this question, which is leading them on the next stage of their journey, which is what I'm doing isn't working. I'm redlining. I'm starting to feel the impact of the stress, maybe blah, 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 blah. What do I need to do differently? And part of that is where all of a sudden you begin looking to the people that are on your team. And there's a number of ways of doing it. We don't have time to go into all, all that, maybe at another time, but say, you know, who on my team has the capability uh, and the desire to step up into a leadership role? Who can I glean? You know, in the uh, medical industry, they they yeah. use this term. What is it? Watch one, do one, teach one. Or in other companies who are always actively succession planning, they call it next man up. You're That's always bomb right there, right there. It's, and then the culture is the thinking is it's like you're, when are you doing succession planning? Always. We're always being mentored by someone above us in a healthy culture, family, business, whatever. And we're training the next man up. And all of a sudden, so you find someone and it's start, you start where you're at, you know, don't try to be someone else who's been in the business for 15 years and then start comparing yourself because he has a team of 50 people or 10 people or whatever. No, own where you're at and pick the person. And then all of a sudden start entrusting them with some of the responsibilities. And yeah, they're not going to do it as good as you at the beginning, but you will never get to where you want to go. If you keep doing what you're doing, that's keeping you like stuck. And so I, I see it all the time with owners. Those that say no one can do it better than me and they're there, they have control issues or fear of whatever. It's OK. There's no judgment. But the, the, the thing is, is the thinking and the behavior that I'm doing me getting me what I want or not? And if not, do I, no judgment. Just do I what do I want to change? What do I want and what do I need to change? And part of that is beginning to f find people to delegate, to practice and start giving responsibilities so you free up more time for yourself to then start focusing on the higher and better values of our time, which tend to move into either other managerial issues as you're building or this entrepreneur role. So those are, I mean, it's kind of like a quick um, tidbit on my own journey to share. Um, and I know, you, you know, um, well, I don't want to put words in your mouth. Uh, what thoughts or comments do you have as it relates to uh, the manager, Tim? I, I, I love it because um, when you first start out, especially as an entrepreneur, it's very overwhelming because let's be honest, you're doing all the roles, right? So once you start getting smart and you're being mentored and you're learning, right, the proper way, creating systems, which is huge, um, then you start, it's kind of like working out. First day, it's like, holy crap, I'm out of breath. This kind of sucks, okay? Then the next day you wake up, oh my God, I'm sore, like, this really sucks. I'm sore. Like I hardly can freaking move. Then you get out of bed and it's like, my God, I can't even freaking walk. I, this is supposed to be good for me. And then guess what? Then day two hits and it's even worse. It's like, wait a minute, what's going on? Then what happens? You get back into the gym, you do it again. Right. And then before you know it, Hey, I'm sore, but it feels good. And Pretty soon you go, wow, I'm starting to see results. And then you start getting compliments. It's like, I'm really starting to like this, you know? And then before you know it, it's not as hard. And business is the same thing. Eventually you level up. Eventually the overwhelm goes away. Eventually you start getting smart. And like you, you're taking notice in other people and you start realizing, hey, I can delegate this task because my skill set has grown now. And I need to be in this side of it, which is the next one. So if you could segue from manager. So eventually think about it and working out. It sucks up at the beginning, but eventually, hey, I was 265 pounds at one point, you know, um, right now I'm still on my diet journey. And uh, even that, my friend, is I noticed that certain things that I eat, certain times that I eat, certain ways that I eat makes me feel amazing. So guess what? I'm learning. So I need to adapt in a way that's going to give me my best version of myself 
well, it's not just reading books. It's not just this, it's this. It's also the way that you treat your body. It's also your diet. So I feel that pain when I go. Now, I love getting into the gym because you know what it does now? It's What's fuel. That? It uh, used to be pain. Now it's fuel. It makes me feel better. It makes me go longer. It makes me even even my psyche, like I'm no, no mood swings, no this. No. It's yeah. just incredible. Not, I'm not preaching working out, but that's part of it. Being an entrepreneur, what did we used to call it? It's like uh, fitness for business. You know, I forget what we call it, but it's true. You know, you if you're way out of shape, your, your business is going to suffer. Anyways, mm -hmm. go to the next one. No, and two, and just, yeah, I love that example you shared about just kind of like, you know, the pain and the, uh, the fitness and the growth and that mentality even that you mentioned about I have to versus I get to. And a lot of times it starts with have to, but as one stays persistent, like you talked about, and with hard work and keeping that image of where you want to go, eventually the mentality, you know, you're on the path when it begins to change to I get to, I love to, and I crave it. And for people to have the, a realistic expectation that when you, you get into this, it's going to be hard. It is going to be difficult. It will require resilience and persistence and people around you to encourage and support you. And if you do it on your own, you'll fail more than likely. Yes. You yes, need, you, yeah. you, you got to have people around you. And so, but to know though, that if you stay the course, all of a sudden, like Tim said, you know, when you start to experience that fruit, it begins to fuel you. And all of a sudden you can develop a love affinity with this whole journey, which is why we're here today sharing yeah. about that and wanting people to see the other side so that you can be equipped to succeed in whatever entrepreneurial journey you're on, whatever stage you're at, whatever, that you can walk your own path and that you can be successful.